Hello, I'm Natasha Malcolm-Brown and in the East, woken up by a police raid in Daventry. This one was carried out in connection with the supply of cannabis to school children. More than 70 officers were involved across the weekend. The Internet Watch Foundation in Cambridgeshire can shut down harmful websites in less than an hour. Today, David Cameron announced it'll double in size. It's hoped it'll remove online paedophilia more quickly. Tomorrow's weather, a cold and frosty start, a largely fine and dry day. Hi, I'm Natasha, here in the East. He won a gold at the Olympics. Today, long jumper Greg Rutherford was back at the club where it all started. Marshall Milton Keynes Athletic Club wants to build an indoor training facility in his honour. And a multi-million pound Primark's being planned for Milton Keynes. It'll form part of a massive extension to the shopping centre. But campaigners have branded the plans a disaster. As for the weather, tomorrow mainly dry with sunny spells, but then showers could follow in the afternoon. Highs of up to 21 Celsius. So we're here on one of the most beautiful national trails, Pedder's Way, which is really important for the local economy. The Rochelle Canteen has just 10 days to stir up enough support for their campaign. The results of their appeal will be published on the 5th of March. Natasha Malcolm-Brown, City News. So I'm here in London where 2011 is supposed to be the year of walking, a scheme to get more people in the capital travelling on foot. The murder of Joan Albert back in 2001 put the small Suffolk village of Capel St Mary firmly on the map. There was much coverage in the media at the time and subsequently as Hall appealed his conviction. Simon Hall was jailed for life. You talk about how stretched you are and you were slightly late meeting me this morning because you were <laughs> rushed off your feet dealing with patients. What would make a tangible difference? I mean, is it just a matter of not having enough bodies on the ground? Is it the funding? What would you like to see change? It, it depends what way you want to run your emergency department. You have to staff it properly. Is it being funded properly? Uh, well, I, you know, that's not for me to say. That's for our commissioners, uh, local clinical commissioner groups to talk about. But you, you'd like more colleagues here to help you? I think it's clear that, uh, you know, we are understaffed in terms of consultants. There's been a number of problems uh, with the Trust over recent months, response times. You've had non-executive directors leaving uh, the mm -hmm. Trust. You've said that the service hasn't been good enough. Yeah. How long is it going to be before we start to see a better service? Yeah, the position this trust got itself into didn't happen overnight. It's not going to get sorted overnight. When you say you don't get the support, just talk me through the kind of experiences that you've had. I, I rang the crisis team first time I've ever done it. It's a, a big thing to do when you are in need to actually reach out. I said to them, I'm sitting here with a razor blade and I am desperate, and I was told to take my evening medication, to have a hot drink, and to watch the television for distraction. Um, and I then went, after the phone call, I then went up to the bathroom and slipped my wrist. How did you feel afterwards about the way that you were treated by the crisis team? I was so frustrated, let down, angry, it's, uh, it's all a mixture. Our reporter, Natasha Malcolm-Brown, was at the inquest today and she joins me from our studios in Central Hello, Ipswich. Mark. So, Natasha, what did the police have to say? Well, temporary detective inspector Trevor Pryor was called as a witness. He recounted the incident itself and the investigation work that followed, recalling how Jimmer had been shot inside Zest nightclub, had left via a fire exit and was then found... Well, for BBC Essex, our reporter Natasha Malcolm-Brown went to the scene earlier on. She joins me in the studio now. What details can you give us about this, Natasha? Well, at first, uh, Essex police and the bomb squad weren't sure if the device was live, Ian, so uh, they put a cordon in place, closing Church Road, and as you say, evacuated the houses closest to it. Members of the Explosive Disposal Team, which is part of the MOD, then used high-tech equipment to X-ray the device. Here's Inspector Christopher Tyler from Essex Police. Well, a device was found in... More on this story now from our reporter for BBC Essex, Natasha Malcolm-Brown. Eight years ago, Olivia Baslington and her friend Charlotte came here to the train station in Elsenham. It was December and the girls were going Christmas shopping in Cambridge. But the gates to the crossing weren't locked and the girls were hit by a train as they tried to cross the tracks. I'm here to meet Olivia's father, Chris, to ask why, after almost a decade, he continues to campaign on behalf of his daughter. All the details from Natasha Malcolm-Brown. 
Thanks, Foz. Good evening. A man from Lowestoft has told a court he's sorry after crashing his car into a house in Carlton. Good Good afternoon. Suffolk Trading Standards' biggest ever case has come to an end today with the jailing of seven people over an escort scam. The case was NHS Trust running Colchester Hospital has been reported to police by the Care Quality Commission after staff told inspectors they were pressured into changing records about the treatment of cancer patients. Suffolk's weather, a chilly night with temperatures dropping quickly, so watch out for a frost. Overnight lows of 0 Celsius, that's 32 Fahrenheit. Tomorrow, a cold, clear and dry day with more sunny spells. Highs like today of 10 Celsius, that's 50 Fahrenheit. BBC News for Suffolk, it's six minutes past six.